Cavisham is one of the oldest suburbs of the city of Dunedin in New Zealand's South Island. It is sited at the western edge of the city's central plain at the mouth of the steep Cavisham Valley, which rises to the saddle of Lookout Point. Major road and rail routes south lie nearby. The South Island Main Trunk Railway runs through the suburb and a bypass skirts its main retail area, connecting Dunedin's one-way street system with the Dunedin Southern Motorway. The suburb is linked by several bus routes to its neighbouring suburbs and central Dunedin. The suburb was founded by wealthy pioneer William Henry Valpy, and its name reflects his family connections with the town of Reading in the English county of Berkshire. Cavisham grew rapidly during the central Otago gold rush of the 1860s because of its location on route south to the Otago hinterland. By the end of the 19th century, Cavisham was heavily industrialised and its population included many skilled or semi-skilled tradespeople. This, combined with the community's strong Protestant roots, led to the area's generally left-leaning political stance. Cavisham is now predominantly residential with some industrial premises in the east, notably the Hillside Railway Workshops, and a retail district centred on South Road and Hillside Road. Residents are generally of a low socio-economic status. Cavisham's notable buildings include the heritage-listed Lisburn House and several prominent church buildings. Another landmark is the suburb's War Memorial, which is the main gate of Cavisham School, one of the suburb's two primary schools. Cavisham also contains a special needs school. The nearest secondary schools operate in St Clair, one kilometre or 0.62 miles to the south. Cavisham has strong sporting connections and is the location of Carisbrook, until recently one of Dunedin's main sporting venues. The suburb is home to the Southern Rugby Football Club and gives its name to Cavisham Football Club. Several notable sports people have associations with Cavisham, among them Test cricketer Glary Grimmett and a father and son rugby union administrators, Old Vic and Young Vic Kavanagh. Other notable people with Cavisham connections include politician Thomas K. Sidey, architect Edmund Anscombe and surveyor John Turnbull Thompson. Cavisham lies at the mouth and in the lower reaches of a valley in the west of Dunedin's main urban area, four kilometres or 2.5 miles southwest of the city centre and two kilometres or 1.2 miles north of the Pacific coast at St Clair. To the south lies Calton Hill, a spur of Forbury Hill on which the suburbs of Calton Hill, Corstephine and Kew are located. The suburbs of Balaclava and Mary Hill lie to the north, close to the western end of the ridge that runs along the northern edge of central Dunedin. These hills were all at once part of the rim of the Dunedin volcano, the long extinct crater of which now forms Otago Harbour. Other suburbs nearby include Forbury, South Dunedin, Kensington and Lookout Point. Cavisham Valley has long been the major route out of the central city to the south. The suburb is located close to the start of the Dunedin Southern Motorway, part of State Highway 1. The main road access to central Dunedin from the south and close to the South Island Main Trunk Railway. The creation of the Dunedin Southern Motorway redirected traffic away from South Road, the main thoroughfare through Cavisham. The railway provides the suburb's most important industry through the Hillside Railway Workshops, which are located in the southeast of the suburb and in the adjoining suburb of South Dunedin. Despite this, there are no longer any public railway stations or halts in Cavisham, the last station having closed in 1962. The hill slopes to the north of Cavisham are less densely populated and still retain some tree cover. This, along with the steepness of the land, provides a natural barrier between Cavisham and the suburb of Mary Hill. Only a few winding roads traverse this barrier, most notably Glen Road, at the eastern edge of Cavisham. At this end, the suburb draws close to the foot of the hills and a natural valley, known locally as the Glen, provides easier road access to the hill ridge. To the northeast of the Glen, a hill spur including a 20 metre or 66 foot cliff separates Cavisham from the central part of the city. Though the name is rarely used, the spur is called Monticello Ridge, named for the mansion of the early settler W.H. Reynolds. It is occasionally referred to as Hillside after the house of the city's founding father, Captain William Cargill, who was located here. This ridge overlooks the flat as the plain stretching across to the Pacific coast was and is still locally known. South Road winds around the spur, connecting with the southern end of Princess Street, one of the city's older and more historic cemeteries, Dunedin Southern Cemetery, 
lies on the inner city side of the spur. At the top of Cavisham Valley are a ridge and the saddle of Lookout Point. Lookout Point commands view to the southwest, past to the outer suburbs of Burnside and Green Island to Saddle Hill, as well as providing a view to the east across the southern part of the central city to Otago Harbour in the Otago Peninsula. The most prominent building in Lookout Point is the local fire station, which also serves both Cavisham and Green Island. This 1956 structure is located immediately to the north of the saddle and is a prominent landmark upon entering or leaving Dunedin. Not far from the fire station to the northeast is Dunedin's tallest tree, a eucalyptus measuring an estimated 100 metres. The Dunedin Southern Motorway officially begins at the Lookout Point saddle between Calton Hill and Merry Hill and sweeps down over Broken Hill Country, past Green Island to Mosgill and the Tyree Plains. Lookout Point is also the home of the former Cavisham Industrial School, located to the northeast of the fire station on Mornington Road. Established in 1869, the school was later a boys' home and is now an adult training centre. Lookout Point's main streets include South Road, Cavisham Valley Road, Rislaw Road and Mornington Road. The Māori name for Lookout Point is Koraka Arunga Teraki. It was the burial site of Chief Rangi Ahia, a late 18th century Kati Mamoi chief who was largely responsible for joining the Kaitahu in Kati Mamoi Iwi. He was buried here so that his spirit might see thence his old haunts to the southward. A 3.4 hectare or 8.4 acre forest reserve is located on the upper slopes of Cavisham Valley below Lookout Point. Purchased by the Dunedin City Council in 1994 with the assistance of the Royal Forest and Bird Protection Society, it is home to various native bird and invertebrate species, including one species of velvet worm believed to be endemic to the Dunedin area. Cavisham was named for Cavisham, Berkshire, a suburb of Reading, by William Henry Valpy, a wealthy early settler who farmed the areas around the lower slopes of Forbury Hill. His initial farm, the Forbury, was located in what is now St. Clair, close to a street which now bears his name. A member of Valpy's family was born in the English Cavisham. In the early days of Dunedin, it was impossible for a dray to reach the Cavisham Valley in wet weather unless it went by a circuitous route around the hills. Valpy solved this problem by hiring men at his own expense to build a crude road from the southern end of Princess Street to his farm at Forbury. This formed the basis for later roads into the suburb. The road curved around the edge of the hills at the glen to avoid a large swamp, the site of which is currently occupied by Carisbrook Sports Ground. Settlement in the area was slow, though Cavisham Valley was a preferred route south out of the city. The Central Otago Gold Rush of 1861 led to rapid changes when thousands of people began using the road on their way to and from the goldfields. The suburb began to expand rapidly at about this time and the first public house, the Edinburgh Castle House, was erected in 1861. By the end of the decade, Cavisham had its own school, post office, drill hall from the Southern District Rifles and Anglican and Presbyterian churches. A third church for the Baptist denomination followed in 1872. Several charitable organisations have had properties in Cavisham, including the Otago Benevolent Institution Home for Invalids and an IHC New Zealand Centre at Kew Park. The Royal New Zealand Foundation of the Blind still has its Otago premises in Hillside Road. Early industries in the area included C and W Shields Brickworks, which had quarries in Forbury, St. Clair and Cavisham, and Cavisham Glassworks, which operated from 1882 until 1909. The last buildings of the gasworks were a local landmark and were not removed until the construction of the Cavisham Bypass in the 1970s and 1980s. Other noted industries in early Cavisham included breweries, a tannery and a match factory. Construction of the South Island Main Trunk Railway south of Dunedin that began in 1871 led to the construction of an 865 metre or 2,838 feet tunnel beneath Lookout Point, connecting Cavisham with Green Island. A second parallel 1,407 metre or 4,616 feet tunnel, the first double track tunnel in the country, was built starting in 1907 and all rail moved to the new tunnel in 1910. Cavisham was served by its own railway station until its closure in 1962.
There has been a long-running campaign to have the older tunnel converted into a cycleway, though the scheme has never gained wholehearted council support. By the 1870s, the population of Caversham was growing rapidly, and in 1877, with the population at around 4,000, it was declared a borough. It held the status until amalgamation with Dunedin City in 1904. The borough's area included much of modern Forbury and St Clair, as well as what is usually regarded as Caversham today. The early history of the suburb and surrounding parts of southern Dunedin have been the subject of a major ongoing archaeological and historical research project into early Dunedin by the University of Otago, known simply as the Caversham Project. Over the course of the last 30 years, a database has been compiled of life in early South Dunedin, focusing on the borough of Caversham. This database is unique in its size for a historical study within New Zealand or Australia, containing some 9.4 gigabytes of data, and has allowed for the examination and publication of details relating to the socio-economic and demographic mix of early Dunedin. The multidisciplinary nature of the study has resulted in information being gathered on subjects ranging from urban planning to gender studies. By using both quantitative and qualitative analyses and by including considerable amounts of oral history, it has allowed for a vivid recreation of the society of early urban New Zealand. Several books have resulted from the project, among them Sites of Gender, Women, Men and Modernity from 1890 to 1939, edited by B. Brooks, A. Cooper and R. Law from the Auckland University Press 2003, and Class and Occupation, The New Zealand Reality by E. Olson and M. Hickey by the University of Otago Press 2005. In its formative days, the Caversham Road Board administered Caversham. This organisation served as a council for Caversham until May 1877 when it became a borough. The borough of Caversham, which existed until November 1904, took in a far larger area than the current suburb, including most of St Clair, South Needham, Kew and Kensington, and stretched to the Pacific coast in the south and Otago Harbour in the east. The names of several of the borough's mayors are commemorated in streets within the former borough, among them Robert Rutherford, William Bridgman and Thomas K. Sidey. The Dunedin City Council currently administers Caversham. The suburb is located in the city's South Dunedin Ward, one of the city's six wards. This ward covers a considerable part of Dunedin's main urban area, as well as the entirety of the Tago Peninsula, and elects four councillors to Dunedin's 14-member City Council. At a national level, Caversham was a separate electorate from 1866 to 1908. MPs for the electorate included Thomas K. Sidey and future Premier Robert Stout. Since 1908, Caversham has been in various electorates and is currently part of the Dunedin South electorate. As of 2014, its MP is Claire Curran from Labour. Unlike most of Dunedin, which was settled by Scots, many early settlers in Caversham were English. This led to some degree of antagonism by the councils of the city and Caversham borough in the early days of settlement. Dunedin had been settled by the Presbyterian Church, whereas Caversham's population was largely Anglican, Methodist and Baptist. There is little evidence of this distinction in modern Caversham other than the origins of local street names, several of which reflect the names of English counties and early English settlers. Caversham began largely as a lower middle to working class suburb. Many of the early residents were skilled or semi-skilled tradespeople. In its early days, Caversham was known as the Carpenter's Borough, as a high proportion of the skilled workers within the borough were employed in the building trade. The socio-economic mix of the borough, combined with the Protestant religious makeup of Caversham, led to strong traditions of egalitarian and socio-humanitarian politics in the borough. The left-leaning politics of the area is still reflected to some extent in local political views. The Dunedin South electorate, of which Caversham is a part, tends to return New Zealand Labour Party members of Parliament and support this and other left of centre parties. In the 2008 New Zealand general election, 54.8% of valid party votes cast in Caversham's two polling stations were for the Labour Party and 10.4% were for the three other main left of centre parties, Green, Alliance and Progressive. The vote for these parties over the whole Dunedin South electorate was 46.7 and 9.4% respectively. The equivalent figures for New Zealand as a whole were 34% and 7.7% respectively. 
Many residents of Kavisham are still of relatively low socioeconomic status when compared to those in surrounding hill suburbs. A 2007 Dunedin City Council report indicated that a high proportion, or 39%, of the suburbs' houses were one- or two-bedroom dwellings. According to the 2013 New Zealand Census, Kavisham has a population of 4,854, a decrease of 204 people since the 2006 census. There were 2,343 males and 2,508 females. Figures have been rounded and may not add up to totals. The suburb has a slightly higher proportion of elderly residents than the Otago average, with 16.9% of residents aged 65 and over. It also has a considerably higher proportion of residents of Māori and Pacific Island descent than the Otago average, 10.4% and 5.2% respectively. Kavishim also has about 50% higher proportion of one-parent families, or 25.8%, than in Otago overall. Ownership of and access to home telecommunications, such as the internet, and to private motor vehicles is considerably lower than the Dunedin City average. Kavisham has no secondary schools, although it does contain a primary school and a special needs school. Carisbrook School, at the corner of South Road and Surrey Street, was formed from a 2012 merger of Carlton Hill School, Kavisham School and College Street School on the Kavisham School site, which was established in 1921. The school's predecessor dates back to the early 1860s. The role is 318 students as of March 2020. The school's two-storey 1920s brick buildings were pulled down and replaced in 1961 because of their structural unsoundness. The school's main gate, the only surviving remnant of the early structure, is the suburb's war memorial. The Sarah Cohen School in Rutherford Street was established in 1926. This school caters for special needs pupils from primary school through adulthood. The school was named for the late wife of Mark Cohen, City Councillor, campaigner for women's rights and editor of the Evening Star newspaper from 1893 to 1920. In 1889, Mark Cohen was a major figure behind the founding of New Zealand's first kindergarten. There are kindergartens and childcare centres in both Rutherford Street by Kew Park and South Road to the east of the main retail area and there are numerous preschool facilities and further primary schools in the suburbs of Forbury and St Clair immediately to the south of Kivisham. The nearest secondary schools are the single-sex schools of Queen's High School and King's High School, located along each other close to the boundary between St Clair and South Needham, one kilometre or 0.62 miles to the south. In its early years, Kivisham was heavily industrialised, but also contained a large number of residential properties. The population included a large number of skilled tradespeople and craftspeople, and both large and small industries abounded. Local industries at the beginning of the 20th century included a brickworks, a gasworks, breweries, a smithy, milliners, several bakeries, a tannery, a bootmakers, and Rutherford's Wax Vesta Match Factory at Forbury Corner. In 1900, the South Road, David Street, Forbury Corner area was home to over 50 businesses. Today... The suburb is mainly residential, though it has areas of retail and light industrial businesses. The main retail area is on South Road between the start of the rise up Cavisham Valley and David Street, entering into David Street and the western end of Hillside Road, Fulbury Corner sometimes referred to as Q Corner. A few shops are also located on South Road, 0.8 kilometres or 0.5 miles to the east near Carisbrook. Hellside Road becomes increasingly light industrial as it approaches South Needham, with automotive engineers, car sales yards, joineries, a rope factory and a funeral parlour. One of Dunedin's largest industrial sites, the Hellside Railway Workshops, dominates the eastern end of Hellside Road, close to which lie other, smaller industrial sites. Beyond this is the shopping precinct of South Needham. Cavisham has four public houses, considerably fewer than in its formative years, these are the Carisbrook Hotel, close to the sports ground for which it's named, the Mitchell's Tavern and the South Road Retail Area, the Waterloo Hotel at Forbury Corner, and the Fitzroy Hotel on Hillside Road near Bathgate Park. Carisbrook, the city's former main rugby union venue and a former test cricket ground, is at the eastern end of the suburb between the Glen and the Hillside Railway Workshops. It was the home of Otago Rugby Union until a new stadium opened in North Needham, the Forsyth Bath Stadium at University Plaza in 2011.
The new stadium is the new home of the Otago Rugby Union and the Highlanders Super Rugby franchise and met with some opposition within Dunedin, with objections focusing largely on the cost. The future of Carisbrook looks bleak and many of the former facilities are in the process of being dismantled or removed. Other than Carisbrook, the suburb's main sports ground is Bathgate Park, which lies at the border of Caversham and South Dunedin in the south east. There are several open areas of recreation ground in Parkland, notably Kew Park at Forbury Corner and Sidey Park, and adjacent parkland along the northern flank of the bypass, and there are tennis courts close to Kew Park on Thorn Street, and a croquet club between South Road and the Caversham Bypass. Kew Park is also home to one of the area's most prominent Batonk clubs. Other sporting links with the suburb include Caversham Football Club, one of today's most successful football teams. Caversham has reached the semi-finals of the national knockout competition, the Chatham Cup, on three occasions and was a member of the former New Zealand National Soccer League for several seasons in the 1970s with the highest final position of fourth in 1975. They also placed in the competition's final season in 2003. Despite its name, Caversham play at Tonga Park, located in the adjacent suburb of Forbury, a ground they share with the Carisbrook Dunedin Cricket Club. Caversham is also home to one of Dunedin's main athletics clubs. The Southern Rugby Football Club, a rugby union club, is located at Bathgate Park to the southeast of Caversham. Southern is consistently among Dunedin's stronger club sides and has been a Targo club champion on over 20 occasions. It was formed from a merger of the Caversham and Pacific clubs in 1899. Southern's players have included over 20 All Blacks, including Stephen Bishop, Stu Forster, Jamie Joseph, Laurie Maines and Gary Sear. Hillside railway workshops dominate the south-east of Caversham and the neighbouring suburb of South Dunedin. Established at the site in 1875, the workshops are the main railway construction and repair shop in the South Island. The workshops cover 8 hectares or 20 hectares, of which 3 hectares or 7.4 acres are covered floor space. To the north of the workshops is Carisbrook, Dunedin's former main sports venue. Opened in 1883, the ground had a capacity of 35,000 people and was floodlit from the 1990s. Used primarily for rugby union, but also for other sports, notably as a test cricket venue, Carisbrook lost its preeminence among the city's sports arenas with the construction of a new stadium in the northern end of the city in 2011. Demolition began in 2013. The ground is named for the former home of early colonial settler James McAndrew, which in turn was named for Carisbrook Castle on the Isle of Wight in southern England. Lisburn House is one of the finest surviving 1860s townhouses in New Zealand. Now run as a bed and breakfast establishment, this house was built in 1865 for the Fulton family, a pioneer farming family at the Ravensclip property on Tyree Plains. The house was named for the family's origins in Lisbon, Northern Ireland, and is Category 1 Heritage listed. William Clayton designed the 12-room house, notable for its steeply angled slate roof and polychromatic brickwork. Two other Category 2 Heritage buildings are on Fitzroy Street, Farringdon Villa, and an untitled house. Other buildings of note in Caversham include the suburb's churches. The Presbyterian Church is located on Thorn Street, roughly halfway between the South Road retail area and Forbury Corner. It was built in 1883 following the destruction of the previous building by fire. The current building, built in Port Chalmers Bluestone with Omaru Stone facing, was designed by T.B. Cameron. Cavisham's Anglican Church, St. Peter's, is located on Hillside Road. Designed by H.F. Hardy, the foundation stone was laid in 1882. The original design called for the church to have a spire, but because of problems with the tower's foundations, which left the tower leading 6 inches or 15 centimetres from the perpendicular, this was never constructed. Caversham Baptist Church is located at the corner of South Road and Surrey Street, close to Caversham School. Unusual among Dunedin buildings, this church was a formal classical style with its brickwork augmented by pediments and square columns. The foundation stone for the building was laid in 1906. A further church, located in South Dunedin, close to the southeastern edge of Caversham, was the South Dunedin Wesley Methodist Church in Hillside Road. This building, constructed in 1893, was threatened with demolition from 2009 and finally demolished in 2017. 
part of the factory of Donahue's Industries, adjacent to the eastern edge of Bathgate Park, is notable because of its unusual shape. The structure, which is less than 4 metres or 13 feet wide, yet some 380 metres or 1,250 feet in length, serves as a rope walk for Donahue's, who have been manufacturing rope and twine at the site since 1876. A somewhat controversial recent addition to Caversham was the opening in October 2013 of the Whakamana Cannabis Museum, New Zealand's first museum dedicated to the history of cannabis use. Cannabis, while still a decriminalised drug in New Zealand, has moved some way towards grudging acceptance, at least as a subject for open discussion. Run from a former residential house in David Street is designed to be an information centre on aspects of the history and legislation surrounding the drug, and also a national centre for the Aotearoa Legalised Cannabis Party, a minor single-issue political party. Noted residents in the Cavisham area have included members of the Society family, several of whom were local or national politicians. Among them was Thomas Society, New Zealand Attorney General from 1928 to 1931. Sidey Park, close to the northern edge of the Cavisham Bypass, and Sidey Street and Corsifine are both named in his honour. Captain William Cargill, founder of the Otago Settlement, lived just to the north-east of Cavisham above the Glen. His house, Hillside, gave its name to Hillside Road, which was at one time called Cargill Road. The area around the site of Cargill's long-demolished house between the Glen and Kensington is still referred to as Hillside. Cargill's Corner... The major road junction at the South Needham end of Hillside Road is also named in his honour. Architect Edmund Anscombe was a Cavisham resident. Anscombe was responsible for numerous important buildings in early 20th century New Zealand, many of which survive to the present day. Among them are the Sergeant Art Gallery in Whanganui and the former Post and Telegraph Building in Wellington. Noted local buildings with work by Anscombe include extensions to the University of Otago Clock Tower Complex in Dunedin North, the main building of the Otago Girls High School in Central Dunedin, and the Allied Press Building in Lower Stewart Street, Dunedin. Another notable local resident was surveyor and architect John Turnbull Thompson. Thompson was chief surveyor of the Otago province from 1856 to 1873, and surveyor general of New Zealand from 1876 to 1879. During his time as provincial chief surveyor, Thompson explored and mapped large sections of the interior of the southern South Island. Many of the place names in this region reflect Thompson's Northumbrian origins, with prosaic names in the form of a Northumbrian dialect name for an animal. As a result, the area is still occasionally referred to as Thompson's Barnyard or the Farmyard Patch. Among sports people with Cavisham connections, Australian Test cricketer and 1931 Wisden Cricketer of the Year, Clary Grimmett, is perhaps the best known. Grimmett, the first player to take 200 Test wickets, was born in the suburb on Christmas Day, 1891. Noted rugby administrators, Old Vic Kavner and Young Vic Kavner were also born in Cavisham. Between them, the father and son were responsible for the changes to the way the game of rugby Union was played through the innovative coaching methods and tactics. The cricketer, poet, songwriter and teacher Robert J. Pope, 1865-1949, was also born in Cavisham. The suburb's main road is South Road, which at its eastern Glen end winds around the flanks of hills before joining with Princes Street and today in the central business district. A slip road connects South Road with State Highway 1 at the foot of these hills just above Carisbrook. Hillside Road, which runs parallel with South Road several hundred metres to the south, is an arterial route connecting South Needham at its eastern end with Needham's southwestern suburbs. At its western end is Forbury Corner, a road junction linking Hillside Road with suburban arterial routes to the suburbs of St Clair, Forbury Road and Corsifine as the Crescent. As well as David Street, the major road link between Hillside Road and South Road, Numerous other small residential streets run parallel with Davis Street between Hillside Road and South Road. The suburb's other main roads include Cavisham Valley Road, Playfair Street, Surrey Street and Glen Road. The latter of these lie at the Glen at the eastern end of Cavisham, providing a link between South Road and the hill suburbs of Mary Hill, Balaclava and Mornington. 
A Cavisham bypass was constructed in the late 1970s and early 1980s and was officially opened in 1987. And now carries State Highway 1 away from the retail heart of the suburb, connecting at its northern end with the city's one-way street system. With the construction of the bypass, Cavisham Valley Road was truncated close to its junction with South Road and the upper street of the road continued as part of State Highway 1, connecting the bypass with Dunedin Southern Motorway. Until the construction of the bypass, South Road and Cavisham Valley Road formed the main route out of Dunedin to the south. State Highway 1 followed South Road through the main retail area, then followed Cavisham Valley Road to Lookout Point. Above its retail area, South Road winds around the flank of Carlton Hill. Cavisham Valley Road forms a straight, a steep route that originally continued from the end of South Road's retail area. For this reason, the part of South Road running through the retail area is also sometimes referred to as part of Cavisham Valley Road. Improvements to Cavisham Valley Road to ease congestion and increase safety began in 2011. A junction at the north end of Cavisham's main retail area connects South Road with the bypass. Cavisham was served by a suburban railway station on the south line between Dunedin and Mosgiel. Services ceased on this line in 1982. The railway station buildings were demolished several years later. Trams served Cavisham between 1880 and 1954, operating in Hillside Road, South Road and David Street. Several bus routes now serve Cavisham, connecting it with the heart of the city. City bus and Dunedin passenger transport run routes from the city centre to St Clair and Corsafine via Hillside Road and to Lookout Point via South Road. Dunedin passenger transport also runs services between the Octagon and both Mosgill and Brighton via South Road. Cargill's Corner... At the south Dunedin end of Hillside Road is a major suburban bus hub.